everyone. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and today I'm sitting down with the cast from Vita, the show which expertly tackles issues of identity, gentrification, and sexuality. is coming back for its second season, where sisters Lynn and Emma begin the task of rebuilding their mother's business. Creator Tanya Soracho joins us today, as well as stars Michelle Prada, Sarah Anzo Ortegi, Roberta Calendres, Chelsea Rendon, Carlos Mirando, and Raul Castillo. But first, let's check out the trailer for season two. You just visiting Lala? No. I live here now. So you're taking over La Chinita then? Yeah. It's called Vida now. Just Vida. Swanky Insta Famous Lounge. We're gonna need to buck up if this is gonna work. I'm ready to buck. Good. If this building doesn't start making money, Nelson forecloses on us. They wanna make it less diving and more sleep. Mexicans, we don't usually do things that way around here. I am Mexican. Oh, you could have fooled me. Look, Emma, you pass. When you find the right person, you realize you don't have to change anything about yourself. We wanted to say something. We were a detour, Lynn. Do you feel like you got your shit together? Fuck yeah. I'm operating on chingona level. I need to be here for the girls. Damn, she looks like a baby drag queen. We got the puta and the blood. This wall is your bar. This says this is a safe space. Help me shape this place. Oh, it's gonna be iconic. Everyone, please put your hands together for the cast of Vida. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone, how you doing today? Good. We're How are good. you? Good. Good. I wow. love the energy. I'm so excited. I uh, got to check out some of season two, a couple episodes actually. So thank you. It is so good and so great to jump back in and like reconnect with these characters. Tanya, I want to start with you because last night you premiered season two at Tribeca. So what was that like? She was just born last night. It feels like. Well, I've been sitting with her. Her. I. I gender Vida. She's a her. Um, I've been sitting, you know, through through um, editing, just knowing that, it, that and, and like dying to share it. It, it was really amazing because like there's a relief, you know, because like ah, but also it was great to hear the reaction that you were hoping for last night was really yeah, loud, the right? laughter and everything. We we you know Tanya is in contact with us like. Yeah pretty much every day and she's always like leaking little like stills or little like tiny moments and scenes so it was amazing to get to see it all together and then see all of it on screen and then hearing people laugh and, and for the first time yourself like I, I love the reaction like you had to the third episode or something it was like yes good it's working it's really good <laughs> like you know sometimes you're like is it really as good as we hope it is and it's really really special there was like the church vibe in the audience of like yup you know like the yes. Yeah, yeah, you can feel people waiting for it to come back, and they're just like, you know, just like us. We're like waiting to see it too, and they were just like, so much more was like so cathartic for them in that moment. I was like, yes, we're here. We're in season two. We're almost premiering for everybody else. So the twenty third, we're just. Wow. I am so excited yeah. for people to see. Well, the first three episodes that we already especially saw. Especially because it's bingeable now, and it's just like you're like yeah. when it ended last night, we were like, no, no, keep going, like. I myself, just as a fan, wanted to just keep watching it. So I'm going to stay up all it, it, it builds. Every episode, you're just like, you want more every time. You know what I mean? You. I did. I watched Great. the first so episode. I was like, I want more. I on the 23rd, the you thing. could have all of them. So yeah. it uh, premieres on the 23rd at 12.01. So plan to stay up all night till 5 in the morning. Um, and yeah. 12 12.01 Eastern? Oh, man. 12.01 everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> oh, wherever you're twelve one New York is not twelve. No, but I think for your joint, you know what we're gonna but, find out. Yeah, yeah find you know out. we'll figure it out by the end. <laughs> May twenty third uh, though. Plan to be up all night. Yeah. Yeah. But like your excitement is so uh, tangible because everybody feels that excitement. I mean, season one has a hundred percent fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is so hard to achieve. And the show won the Glad Media Award for best comedy. I mean. How does that feel, having a show that's so personal and so, you love so much, be so well received? Uh, it was exciting, you know, when we released it la um, last year, the first year, not, you know, these are all the most talented actors, but n n there's, you know, a lot of people, first time or second time, you know, new faces, fresh faces. So the fact that it got embraced the way it did and uh, the reaction, especially to the to the subject matter, um, you all can talk, because you, you, you keep hearing from people, right? You know, not just online, but in person, like what some of the characters mean, because they're, they're based, 
in reality, they're written by an all Latinx writers room, right? So they're very like true to life. People have skin in the game. Lots of queers are in that writers room. So it 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 the way we build it is just as important as what we're building. Well, it's yeah. so exciting is to get the reaction of people who do not look like me or any of us, like to be like, oh, when I, you, we were just so touched by and connected to the story and to the characters and what they're going through and the relationships that y'all have in there. It's just like my family, I'm staring like, wow, it's happening. Like, this is incredible that that this 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 could touch people that isn't in, 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 in our, like, isn't in exactly reflective back, like, is so much more than exciting. It's like we're here. Like, we're at this We moment. exist. We right? exist. We, we had, a, we had a, an audience, uh, someone in the audience yesterday who came and did not know what the show was about at all okay. and was, like, absolutely blown away by it. So that, and that's really, I mean, that's, that means everything, you know what I mean, to kind of get people to open up their hearts and minds and not, not know, go into something not knowing and all of a sudden they walk out like with this whole like wow man this is amazing I'm, te I'm seeing myself up there somehow you know what I mean? Yeah because it's a story about family and about identity and grow like I think we've it's been brought up a few, a few times of finally growing up and I think so often this coming of age story has kind of been like oh it happens in high school or this or that but then we're fed this and we think oh well it hasn't happened to me yet there's something wrong with me and it's like it happens all the time. It happens in your mid twenties, and you do it again in your late twenties, and your mid thirties, and you turn forty, and you're like, "What am I doing?" Like, you know, all that stuff. And to really get to show that, because you're constantly a work in progress, and you're constantly having to face the parts of you that you think, "Oh, I re I got this," yeah. and then all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, I do not got this." Yeah. So I, you get to see these characters really live in this fully fleshed out world. In your character specifically, you play Emma, and I. Like you said, I when I first watched season one, I was just so shocked by how bold the storylines were. And Emma specifically, you think you know who she is, and then every episode there's a layer that's peeled back, and she's so nuanced and complex. Yeah. Have you seen a character like her on, on TV before? Um, I mean, I haven't seen every TV show, yeah. so I cannot speak on behalf of all TV shows, but I know that I haven't had an opportunity to audition for anything like this. And getting be, being able to see somebody like myself uh, is, is is so important, I think, for women to be able to see themselves. Yes, you can succeed. Yes, you can uh, just put yourself through college and do all of these great things. And it's okay because you don't have it all together all the time and you're constantly a work in progress. And I think that that's such a testament to the writer's room because they, they kind of give us the little softball and we just do our best to kind of hit it as strongly as we can, but it's not just about us. It's about everything that's going on behind the lens. It's about everything that's happening because we can't like push something up a hill if it's not already kind of ready to get pushed there. So it's really cool. And Tanya, you know, with her character specifically, we see her owning her sexuality in a way that I really haven't seen a lot on, on TV. So take me through that process of how you write those scenes. They're very female empowerment focused, it, it feels like. These girls, uh, Lynn too, they have agency. You know, they, they they know what they like, what gets them off. They feel empowered. Now, they might um, use uh, their, you know, sex, by, to, you know, to, to cover up a vice or to, you know, process something. But they but they know what they like. Um, and we, we get into that a little bit more season two. So you're going to get to see that. But that was really important because, my like I said, my writer's room is um, mostly female except for one cis male. And, um, and the... People with agency, you know, and also in in the queer, you know, in the queer moments, we wanted to show um, show the details that we haven't gotten a chance to see, you know, and that is all very workshop in the room because you know we have people who have skin in the game. Um, we we have a scene where we're you know having to do with some vibrators and um, and and a condom, and that was days and days of discussion and debate of what it meant but it's a it's it's a short moment but it, it, it's built the show is built of a lot of those discussions and moments it, so it just becomes part of the tapestry but that's what ma like grounds it and makes it so real it's a short moment but it's one you just mentioned i just watched it and i was like i took note of it it's something that i you know i, th I think it's important to show and represent and you don't really get that i've never seen that yeah, yeah. put a and condom and a vibrator exactly like, no, yeah and and sarah we left last season with your character really struggling uh having being attacked and a hate crime so where do we pick up season two and move forward with that well uh after the sixth episode is it takes place uh nine days after that so season two picks right up after that and so eddie is uh not only just mourning still vidalia's death and the loss of her wife and loss of so much from that uh, 
that also broken ribs. So three broken ribs, a punctured spleen, dislocated hip, mm -hmm. you know, beaten face, bruised uh, everywhere, you know. And so recovering from that is like, that's where we're at. We start from the bottom and then we keep, you know, we, you know, the, the recovery process is every day is like pretty much an episode. So for Eddie is dealing with the physical pain. So great. Thank you, Tanya. I mean, really is, is for the, uh, so juicy for me as an actor to, oh, you, you know, it's like balance, like balancing all those plates and you throw another one on there. You're like, how much can you balance? Like, oh, well, what's going to happen? You know, and, and, and I think it's also, we get to see Eddie in a different light this season. Uh, because of everything they're going through and also unexpected things that do come up mm -hmm. and wonderful, also wonderful things that happen between, you know, the, the sisters. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so there is that, but then there is a lot more that you don't see coming. So how does someone in survivor mode, survivor mode, you know, it comes out, yeah. sometimes you get out of character, you know, sometimes you do things you wouldn't normally do, but that's what any human being would be going at or would be doing these things. So it's a beautiful thing to bring to the big screen. Or and the, it's great because it's such a... You know, being a human being isn't just based off of your who you choose to fall in love with, with the color of your skin. I mean, we're human beings, and I think that that's something that's incredible because at its heart, it's an American story. It's a story about siblings and, and love and all that, and we get to also get to really experience these two together and see another sibling uh, complicated you know, brother-sister yeah. relationship. So we, we, we dabbled on that a little bit in season one when you had the dad and the machismo yeah. and he's... But you, 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 get to, to. you get to see a little more of, of their, you know, dynamic, their relationship in, in this yeah. with, with each other. And I love, you know, I love how much Eddie is committed to the neighborhood and the bar and keeping things going. Same thing with Mari. She is so focused on keeping that neighborhood authentic and so how important is that storyline for you just to get to play that character? For me, it's even more um, amazing for me because I'm also from the area. Mm -hmm. So to be able to play this character just is like that extra like that extra dash of love that like when you're making something and it and it's really beautiful and to be able to work with Carlos and to work with everybody and be in the area and really connect, I think is amazing. And also putting human faces to a problem that people hear about in the media and they don't really realize it. They're just like, oh, another something, gentrification, whatever, like another news article. But we're actually putting faces to what's going on. And I think it humanizes it. And hopefully people feel for it and understand it more than just another news article. And how does your relationship with Carlos, you two, in season two, how does that continue to evolve and change? Because there always seems to be a little tension there. Well... See, my brother's stupid, <laughs> you know, and That's so harsh. it's that thing where he's the older brother, but she's kind of been the older sister or the wife or the mom that's had to take care of him. And you've been holding my, our the dad. weight of the family. Yeah. Really, really calm. And, like, you know, in the Latino community and a lot of cultures that are very like male machismo. The very macho ness to it. The macho -ness, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the woman's cleaning, cooking, doing this and doing that. And then still doesn't get any. Very old school. Yeah. Very old school. Doesn't get any praise for it. And it's like he's taking care of the dad's shop. So he's the man that stepped up when I'm the one doing everything else. <laughs> and so I think that's really interesting. And, and season two, they're kind of in the same place, even though they're different ages. And they're it's both that a little, question. They're both a little kind of lost. Yeah. But they're each of them, you know? Yeah, and so it's, it's really cool to see that, that they're go both going through it and how they go through it differently, but similarly at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the machismo, we have Raul joining. Mm -hmm. Speaking of machismo. Second season. Was, Speaking of machismo, wait, what? Masculinity. Only because I know you're, you're going to be taking on the role of Baco, and I heard that he brings a different Hyper-masculinity yeah. that we didn't have. Yeah. So, when by the way, when you showed up on the screen, there was a lot of hoots and hollers all of a sudden, because like, he like, does the slow look. Right. We introduce both characters, both new characters, very well. They both have their, you know, um, entrances. Yeah. Before we move on to Baco, I have to say that one of my favorite scenes was between your two characters in, in the second episode. That was Thank a beautiful, you. beautiful scene. So I, I was, first episode. Thank, that, you. That yeah. first Thank episode. you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had to, I leaned over to Chelsea and I was like, that was yeah. awesome. I uh, got to sit next to each yeah. other. So, like, during certain things, I would lean on him, or then he would that touch scene, me. That like, scene was... They were watching scene. for the first time, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. But, um, no, I was a fan of the first season of the show. I thought it was a really special show. I've known Tanya since I was 14 years old. Uh, we came up together out of Texas, so to 
get to join we this met in the hallway of our high school. Yeah, yeah. It is incredibly special. But and, and Baco is just it's an it's, he's a fascinating character and I think they you know, it being one of the few cis male characters on the on the, on the show, I think he's handled in in a really elegant way and I thought I thought uh, that the journey uh, that Tanya and the writers wanted to take the character on was was exciting, uh, especially when you're. There's already such it's a, already like such a vibrant, full world, and and uh, you know I just I, I was I, I just got excited by the character being this like this sort of this new energy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tanya, can you talk about why that energy is important to season two? What that adds to the cast? Well, uh, we always wanted you know the world to reflect the neighborhood and to reflect the, reflect the culture. Um, we had three hours, you know, the first season. We, it, it's kind of like a three hour pilot. You know, we just had to get to know these four storylines. And now the world expands, you know, not just with Baco, but uh, Nico, another character, Rudy, like uh, the world expands. And and then you're able to have those, those energies. But it was just a matter of like introducing first season. And now we get going, yeah. Nico? Roberta, what's going what's up? on? What's up? Uh, so I know you were a fan of the first season. We, you told me that in the back. Uh, what has this experience been like joining this cast for you? Oh, joining the cast was, uh, you know, I, I've never had the displeasure of working with anybody that was horrible, you know, but this was like a, an especially warm kind of feeling walking into the, the table read on the first day that I was there. Um, Nico doesn't come until the third episode, but... Um, and you guys already had this whole season, and it wasn't like I was this new person that was stepping in. It was it was just like everyone was so ha like just so sweet and nice, and like you know we weren't. It, it didn't feel like an introduction. It just it's like you've been. Like, it's like you've been here. Yeah, it was like I was just like the cousin that doesn't come around very often or something, you know. But but it was cool, and it's and it it, it you know I was nervous because I was like I'm also playing a character that comes in who doesn't know these people, and it's the first character that's not from the neighborhood. And so it's the first chance that you have of a perspective from outside, and and I wanted to handle it appropriately. And 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 just from talking with Tanya before, like I I I knew that it was going to be like a really special relationship that I had to all these characters, and it was a really specific function that that Nico has to serve as far as like not being you know intrusa, just like being like really just being like level about what she's taking in and what she has to offer too. We've worked together too. Um, um. Roberta has been in my plays before, so um, we had a history as well, yeah. you know? So I was just so excited that we were able to, to get to work together in this format. Yeah. yeah, I think when you were like, you wanna you wanna be my show, I think I was like, duh. <laughs> like, well. What does it mean for you guys as performers to be on a Latinx show where the writers and the crew and people look like you? It's family, it's community. And sound like us, And right? sound like you, like that must be such a special special unique experience that because you it's not like that on every you don't have a special the comfort of, that yeah. comes with that you know yeah. being around everybody it's like yeah. you feel comfortable you feel at home well if 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 someone is writing something that they're not coming from it, it they're writing the idea of being the thing mm -hmm. and if and if you are the thing then you're writing the experience and you don't have to come up with like you know you don't have to talk about it you already have the shared kind of language to go into it with a head start and it will seep in because it's not just uh, what they say how they say it it's in the world um what what's inside drawers right you've found some things in drawers you've found some things um it's uh, um the kind of crafty we have and el otero that comes you know okay. there's so much all the writers are always like oh for my episode here here's a taco truck or here's an elote or, here's churros. churros and i'm just like I, I literally lived like seven minutes away from our stages. She was so, so uh, whenever they posted that yeah. something was there, I would just, just show, show up. up. Right. I saw you show up. Like, are you working today? And I'm like, nah, like, no, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> and it's like, oh, so then after like the first two times, they were just like, oh, hey, yeah, here it is. Like there was no question, but I would literally show up in my onesie from home. Like I'll be in bed and be like, oh wait, shit. And then I would just drive over and then go back home. Food is love. You know, we show yeah. love in the first season. We have a lot of flan moments because it's like food is love. It's a very Sonia sensual actually show. bought me my first flan for my birthday last year, my first flan. Let's and not I don't talk like about it. She doesn't like flan. We can't, I, I, we can't, I feel so betrayed. I, but, uh, texture, texture, I know. It's the texture. Yeah. And I like chocolate. That's the best part, the texture. No, yeah, but like, Chelsea, Chelsea also doesn't like Cholula. So I, don't I don't like Cholula. Like, I don't like the patio. Do you like Valentina? I'm weird. Do you like Valentina? No. <gasps> 
Chelsea, we have to. You don't mind if we use this so error our diary laundry, right? Because right? that's cool yeah, with yeah, everybody. We were about cool. Behind the, <laughs> I, I like just it. don't. I, well. I just don't. There's a lot of things like the beans specifically, and the flan is the texture. I don't like. You don't like beans? No. Don't like what beans. the? Okay. No. Your card is like rice and beans? Your card is real This was the taste coming out. I didn't even know it. Don't mean I gotta like beans, okay? You know, but that that is reflected with Emma. Um, with, I have to tell you, with the first season we were so surprised because she ate a taco in a very specific way, and it was all like sanctioned. Yeah, we were. Yeah, she eats a taco that way. Oh my god, she didn't her, tilt her head. Brown Twitter, <laughs> no, but that was choice. But Brown Twitter came for her because she was like, she's not eating a taco the right way. How do you eat a taco the right way? People ask me. Well, like, and then the Valentina. Yeah, I have and some she put, about she, she, he did. He was like, where does he put Valentina? So. We, you will hear why this season, Raul Castillo. But because the other it, thing was also uh, Melissa, Melissa Barrera, who unfortunately can't be here. We love you. Um, she's in the Heights. She's, she's in the Heights saying. working, which is amazing. Aww, cute. Um, but she was like, my husband, Paco, eats Valentina on everything. Yes. So like, I never, it never occurred to me that that was weird. And that was like, an, it's an interesting conversation. People now. had reaction, like, what? Oh, but it's oh great. now you're bringing up oh, the now. reaction to it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but it, but it was great polemic because we've, um, because the show's so specific that it was like, why is it being, you know, consumed that way? That the, I, the conversation that it engendered ended up in season two. Like, it's a whole <laughs> scene about it. But look, yeah. I'm proof, living proof, that yep. all brown people don't have to like beans. All brown people don't like to ha like like fucking tapatio or whatever. I just I can't. It, it's Chelsea. what do you put on I'm rice? Different. Nothing. My mom. No, White no. Rice? My mom makes the bombest rice. You don't yeah, need. Put, you don't need it. to we put anything. You know. Ted knows yes. what's up. Ted Actually, has my mom's the rice, rice is really good. Bomb. Chelsea's mom's rice, rice we have is really good. <laughs> It's not like when you go to those restaurants, it's just like fluffy, but there's no flavor. My mom has that Nor Suiza, boom, 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 boom. But, but I think it's so reflective of like the fact that the show doesn't represent also all Latinx people or all brown folks, so or all of, you know, regions. So it's like a slice. And also within it, you see all different kinds of yeah. folks that would be like, you know, you would expect them to be one way and then foom, they're another way. And I think that's something that threads through all of our characters. I know. mean, absolutely. I remember Lena Waithe not that long ago talked about how she writes black characters with a really tiny brush instead of like a broad mm -hmm. stroke. And that's when I watch this show, that's what I get. There are, you know, the Latinx community loves in different ways and has family in different ways and eats their meals in different ways. And it is... So important Stop to see beaming. that, and so you know, I enjoy it the show. It comes a so radical much. act, you know, to be put complicated characters like that. Yeah, that's why screen. beat is so beautiful to watch. Um, I know we do have a couple of questions before we get out of here. Um, the first one comes from Twitter. Question for Tanya: As a writer, how do you make sure to write authentically and avoid stereotypes and caricatures? We just stay true to the the people that we have. Um, crafted that we're representing. You know, Emma is very real to me. Yeah. Lynn is very real. I, everybody's very real to me. And we just stay true. Don't try, um, don't try to think what will the audience think. Don't go that step. Stay true to what this character will do. And sometimes the character speaks to me. I'll be showering. Um, and I came, <laughs> I remember when I came back to the writer's room, I was showering. I was like, oh no. Ah, oh, La Chincha is going to get back together with Tlaloc. She was telling me somewhere, you know, I was, I came back to the writer's room. Y'all have bad news. Mari is going to get her with Tlaloc. And they all, no, no, I'm sorry. That's what she's saying. She's speaking, and that's what she's saying. She really wants us. It, it, it comes a little bit of brujería, a little witchcraft. It comes, but but it, it, I do think that um, because they're centered in, in something real, it, it that's just how I keep it real. I don't know. Wait, I'm fascinated. Yeah. So your characters kind of speak to you. Like, you feel that connected. I'm not insane, but no, a no, little I bit. Think it, yeah. <laughs> I think um, you're no, an artist. Like a version like of the point. muse, yeah. you know? Yeah, she's like, screaming at her house through her little recording thing. So she has, oh, yeah, it's true. She I, has a no. man living there. Yeah, that's so, right. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. That's the ghost. That's you guys are knowing all of our no, secrets. I, no, I use my recorder, and I'll um, all of a sudden, I'll be, like, doing something else, like feeding my cats. I'm a cat lady. Uh, feeding my cats, I'll be like, ooh. And then I start going, I, I'm Lynn, and then I'm um, Emma. I'm Lynn and Emma, and I grab my phone, and I record it. For later, and so, like, the first week and or, or two of the writer's room, it's just listening to these. Is this anything? Is this anything? And then um, we they sort of make it there. But they speak. I don't know. They speak. That's how I used to write my plays. Tanya. Too. They just sort of, you know. Yeah. Tanya, you're like I'm not insane, and then you're like I'm a cat lady. <laughs> a cat lady. Right. And I talk to my recorder, and, uh, and I have a ghost. <laughs> And there's a ghost that talks to me, but Listen, you know, all normal things takes, here. Yeah. That's what it takes. Yeah. Uh, I know we have a question in the audience. Hi, I'm wondering if any of you took costumes or props from the set. 
Oh. <laughs> no. So my, my cousin he from South America and in, in Argentina was like, I like these glasses. Like I was wearing it from, from the uh, Marcos's apartment. And they were so kind to let me give gift it to him. Like, because it's like, oh, I, wow. I can never like, I don't know, have that opportunity. But with the show, it's something special to have like, so they were like retro glasses that were all gold. It was cool. I uh, really wanted to take I, my chingona jacket, which you see oh, in the trailer. So but they're like, well, we can't give it to you because it, when season three comes, like, we need it. And I'm like, damn it. So you can so get it. Hija de tu madre. I took I know. a dress for a weekend because I had a wedding to go to that I was flying out. Like, we finished shooting up Friday. I was going straight to the airport, landing, going straight to the wedding in, in Mexico, in Merida, and then having to fly back then the next day and go to set. And I was like, I don't have time to buy a dress. And the wardrobe girl was like, I got you. Wear the dress and for the I, wedding, And it was right? the dress that I wore in the scene to the wedding. And she's like, it hasn't come out yet. They won't know. So I wore the dress to an actual wedding. Somebody else borrowed a wedding outfit, too. I got some Vans out Borrowed. Though. <laughs> borrowed. Oh, we haven't got it back. OK. <laughs> you guys are finding out. She just said she kept it off the mic. I didn't Wait, hear that. No, I didn't. No, it oh. fell off a truck. It was lost. <laughs> um, it was unfortunate. I don't know what happened to the jacket. Uh, next question. Hi, Tanya. I Hi. love your work. Thank oh, you thank so much you. for being here. Um, I just wanted to ask, how much does your background influence your writing, um, like being Latina, and how personal do you get with your writing? I mean, it, it's all um, a little bit, my DNA is infused in all these characters. Um, I don't know how else to do it. I'm, I haven't done anything like researchy. It's just, uh, that's how it comes out. They, the stars pitched this to me. They said, we want something about gentrification and chipsters, Chicano hipsters, uh, Latina females in the east side of LA. That's what I had, that was my assignment, those five things. And then you just sort of fill in the world. You do have to put yourself in it. Lynn is me in my 20s in lots of ways, bad choices, you know. Um, uh, Emma is me in my 30s, complicated choices, you know. Um, and, and then everybody, my, my chingona center is Mari, you know. Um, uh, Sarah's heart, you know, so like, it, um, or Eddie. Um, and so you, it's, it's easy to write that way if you like sort of mind those parts of you. The other writers have to also find those things in themselves. Um, so we, you do mind yourself, but it doesn't have to be so specific. But like, for example, um, I really wanted us to watch someone convalesce and the re realism of that because in 2016, I had really bad surgeries. I almost died. So I remember being not being able to walk, not being able to the bathroom. Yes, peeing yourself. All that ended up with Eddie because I'm like, and when you don't have a caretaker, when you have the money, like how, how does that work? And also the shame of being, having to be taken care of. So like, it, it sort of translated this really horrible, harrowing experience in 2016. And I put it right on Eddie. And it was really important. Like on set, I'd be like, no, no, no. So you, you would hold yourself up like this. If you're <gasps> el agua, nothing happened. <laughs> but you know, like it, uh, a lot of the physicality was really important to me because it was like, this is how, and, and like the progress too of getting better. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, also, also really quickly, like, I don't think a lot of people realize that the pilot was written during that time as oh, well. Yeah. I wrote it like Frida Kahlo, like this. Yeah. 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 I mean, she was painting. She was <laughs> painting. You know what I mean? Like, that's something when you think of <laughs> making excuses as to, well, you know, I'm not doing this thing because this happened to me, or, you know, if I could only get to this point, then maybe I could do that stuff. But Dana wrote the pilot in that space and use every single bit of it to tell the story. And that means you don't, there's no, there's no excuses. If there's something that you want to do, you'll find a way to do you it. You gotta buck up. Buck up. <laughs> Time to buck. <laughs> Uh, I am actually curious too, uh, going into season two with all the things going on politically, does that seep in even more in se season two or is that something that- Subtly. Yeah. I think it's just the world that, we, I mean, the, it takes place in present day. So it is silly for it not to be a thing. I don't think it's something that we're like, let's just sit down and have a conversation about it. But you see, you know, like someone's wearing a pin or someone makes a comment in the way that you do in life. It, I don't think yeah. it's 
meant to be a particularly political statement, but it's just the way that you would talk. Like in the East Side, you see artwork, just like very much a street art. You know, you see in the streets, and it's like, or you see saying, you know, you see stickers, you see stickers of the artists saying something about gentrification or what's happening to the to the immigration or things like that, or you know, with the administration and stuff. So that's like normal, but that's them, you know, expressing and being, and that's that's what a, a lot of artists in the East Side. That's like a like a, a beautiful like you know, hub of these artists and music and and in, in the political and the activists and the artivism. So artivism rose like so much and like comes from like, mm -hmm. I mean, in, in many other areas, you know what I'm saying? But like in the East Side, it was like, so, you know, Los Lobos and all that. So it's like part of it is, and the music and all that it's always comes from political. Well, like I said, I watched season one. I got to check out the first three episodes of season two. You guys continue to nail, the, nail it with this show. It is such a joy to watch. And also, I think, inspires so many important conversations. And I hope people really take the time to watch it. So two. all 10 episodes of the second season of Vita will premiere on the Stars app, Stars on Demand, and Stars Play on May 23rd. And you can also catch Vita every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Stars starting May 26th. Please give it up for Vita. Woo. Thank you. Yay. 